Governor Steve Sislak held a rally in Nevada on Tuesday with former President Barack Obama and Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. Governor Sislak spoke about inflation in America and admitted, quote, I can't solve the inflation problem, but I'm doing everything in my power to put money back in your pockets. Governor Sislak said he would do this by taking on big drug companies and, quote, lowering the cost of housing, child care, and free community college for more students. Governor Sislak slammed his opponent, Joe Lombardo, saying, quote, my opponent is as extreme as it gets on abortion. He said Lombardo, quote, supports a ban on abortions, wants to ban contraceptives. According to polls from 538, Governor Sislak is in a tight race with Joe Lombardo. You know, when I ran for governor four years ago, we had so many plans. From improving our schools, growing our economy, lowering the price of health care. But what we didn't plan for was facing the world's worst pandemic in a century, in a hundred years. Thank you. The past few years have been tough on our families. No state was hit harder than Nevada. But I am so proud of the resiliency and the people of Nevada that fought so hard to get us back on track. We've surpassed our all-time high employment-wise. We're getting people back to work faster than anywhere else in the country. Our kids are back in the school in the classrooms where they belong. But Nevada, we've got more work to do and we're not stopping now. I grew up in a blue-collar family in the Midwest, put myself through college. Nevada is where I raised my two daughters that are here tonight. Where as a single dad, I opened a small business and helped take care of my 96-year-old mother. And where I married the love of my life, our first lady, Kathy Sislak, who is with us tonight. I have lived the Nevada dream and working every day to make sure every person in the state gets that same opportunity. And that starts by lowering costs. I know our families are being pinched right now. And the truth is, I can't solve the inflation problem, but I'm doing everything in my power to put money back in your pockets by taking on the big drug companies and expanding affordable health care. Lowering the cost of housing, child care, and free community college for more students. And we've done all that without raising a penny of taxes on everyday Nevadans. And we're proud of that. And here's something else. I've told this story, a lot of you have heard this story, heard me tell this story. Last year I was on lunch duty at the public schools. Uh, to be specific, it's a school not far from here, and I walked in and the principal said, nice to see you, Governor, have you ever done this before? I said, no. She said, okay, you get milk duty then. <laughs> you get to ask, do you want chocolate milk or do you want white milk? That was it. That was my choice. And chocolate milk's 25 to 1, let me tell you something. These kids love chocolate milk. And I noticed that the kids separated themselves into two lines. Two kids would go in one line and one in the other, and then one in one line and one in another line. And I didn't quite understand it. And I was reading these kids' faces and seeing what they were feeling by looking at them. And there was a difference between the two lines. So I asked the principal, I said, what's going on? What's the deal with the two lines? She looked at me a little sad and said, Governor, that's the line that the parents can afford to pay for the kids' lunch. If they get subsidized lunch, they go in the other line. We want one line in our lunchroom. One line.
couple, a couple weeks later, I was in another school. And for that, we put $75 million into free school lunches and breakfasts for every student in Nevada. Everyone. A couple weeks later, I was in another school. I got another chance to do hot lunch. Different school. And I came in, and the principal said, Governor, have you ever done this before? I said, oh, yeah, I had milk duty once. I've done this before. She said, OK, you can give up the entree tonight, this afternoon. So I got to give a choice of grilled cheese sandwich or piece of pizza. <laughs> so I got to talk to the kids and had a great time. And at the end of the lunchtime period, little one, uh, yay high, couldn't have been more than eight, nine years old, comes to me. Said, could I get it, please get an extra grilled cheese to take home to my little sister? And if that doesn't break your heart, I question if you have a heart. Because let me tell you something. No child should go hungry in the United States of America. That's our job, to fix problems. And we fight like hell for every citizen in the state of Nevada because you're that important to me. You are our family. That's just the beginning. We've got a lot of unfinished business, Nevada, a lot of unfinished business. This year, you'll get to choose whether or not we get to finish that business and we get the job done. My opponents try to keep you in the dark the whole time on where he stands. He tried to muddy the waters, lie to you, but you can see how extreme that he is. But I can tell you the difference between us. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah! In my first year, we gave our teachers the first raise that they had gotten in a decade. A decade! We funded our schools at the highest level they have ever been funded at. And he wants to take $300 million out of our public school system and give it away. We can't stand for that. Every child, every child, regardless of their parent's zip code or their bank account, deserves a quality education. And we're going to make that happen. When it comes to affordable health care, my administration took on the big insurance companies and the medical debt collectors. We ended surprise billing for everyone. We protected, yeah, and if you've got a, had a bill, you know what I'm talking about. We made sure that pre-existing conditions were covered so you couldn't be denied coverage. And we're the second state to pass a public health insurance option for everyone that will take effect in 2026. But while I'm working to make health care more affordable and lower the cost of prescription drugs, my opponent says that affordable health care is BS. I think he's BS, but that's a different story. I know it's not BS to make sure that our families don't go bankrupt and that they stay healthy. But this year, that's on the ballot, too. And thanks to Donald Trump's Supreme Court, your right to choose is on the ballot. Yeah, I'll take a vote. Yeah. Your right to choose, every woman's right to choose, is on the ballot. My daughters have less protection than the generation that came before them. That's just not right, folks. That's just not right. It is time that we draw a line and take a stand. My opponent is as extreme as he gets. He supports a ban on abortions, wants to ban contraceptives, would let other states throw our health care providers and women who travel for procedures in jail. That's what he wants to do. He would pass cruel policies. We signed an executive order to protect every woman coming to the state of Nevada and every health care provider from being prosecuted.
but you heard what John Legend said, and he's 100% correct. A woman's decision on when and if to start a family is hers and her doctors alone. No politician should be getting involved in that decision. That's a woman's right. That's a woman's right and that's a human right. There's one other person that's counting on my opponent to win. The billionaire who was single-handedly bankrolling his entire campaign. Why would one rich guy spend $25 million plus and try to buy this race for Joe Lombardo? There you go. That's exactly right. Tell me he doesn't have something in it. And I said he wanted, he was upset that we put, during the pandemic, we put an eviction moratorium in place, which meant you couldn't, and we needed to do that to protect our families. He didn't like that. He didn't want me to put an eviction moratorium in effect. And I said, hell no. We're protecting the citizens of Nevada, the residents that live here. Greedy billionaires are not going to tell me what to do. We're going to take direction from all of you. That's who we represent, you. But my team is stronger than that and better than that. I've got a strong, small office team, a mighty team. I've got a couple of them are here tonight. I know my chief of staff, Ivana Kinsella, is here, and Bailey Bordelin is here, too. And let me tell you something, they are working 25 hours a day to get the job done, and we appreciate everything that they do. Thank you. The bottom line is this, whether well, it's Donald Trump, who, get this, he called the greatest president ever. I mean, come on, folks. Give me a break. Give me a break. He doesn't care about working families. He cares about his rich billionaire friends and major corporations that he wants to give a tax break to and raise your taxes. That's what he wants to do. He's proved that he'll say and do anything to get elected. And he thinks you're not smart enough to see the truth. Well, I know you are smart enough to see the truth. He's not a leader. He's not a fighter. But. He, <laughs> but you have a choice this year. We've made a lot of progress in the last four years, folks. We've made a lot of progress. We've taken a lot of steps forward. We cannot afford to go backwards. It's not something we can do. We need to get out and vote every single person and get these people elected. Now, I'm guessing Everybody here has probably voted already. Can I get a show of hands? All right. There you go. There you go. But that's not enough. Sorry. I need you to do something else for us here. I need you to get somebody else to go vote with you. I don't care if it's your next door neighbor, the guy on the block, you know, kid at the grocery store packing your groceries, somebody wherever. It could be somebody walking a dog in front of your house. Ask them if they voted and help them get out and vote. We need every vote. We need every vote. And I'm confident we have the ground game that can take on the billionaire people that are behind them. Because we're on the right side. They're on the wrong side. We made voting as easy as possible for everyone. Everyone got a mail-in ballot. You can still mail that back right up until next Tuesday. We still have three days of early voting left. And you can register to vote right up until the polls close next Tuesday. So if you haven't registered, you got somebody who hasn't registered, take them to register and vote. We have restored the voting rights of 77,000 previously convicted individuals who deserve their rights back. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. These 
These races are going to be razor thin clothes, folks. I'm telling you. Some of these races are going to be decided by a couple hundred votes. That's how important every vote is. I was with a group of young folks at a boba tea shop last week. I didn't know what boba tea was until I went to the meeting. It's really pretty good. Uh, and got to talk to these, some of these young kids. And one of them said to me, he said, Governor, what difference does it make? I'm just one person. Why should I vote? I says, your vote means the world. The future is yours, but it's not yours if you don't exercise your right to vote and speak up. We need to get everybody voting. And whether it's my race and I need your support, or it's Catherine Cortez Masto, you're going to see her in just a minute. Uh, Dina Titus, Susie Lee, Stephen Horsford. Lisa Canho Burkhead, Aaron Ford, Cisco Aguilar, Zach Conai, and Ellen Spiegel, or our legislative candidates. We've got a lot of assembly, all of our assembly people and senators. Let's get out and vote for them as well. My opponent wants you to believe the worst. He wants to scare you. He wants to keep everybody home and suppress turnout. He wants you to think that your vote doesn't matter. He's wrong. He's damn wrong, because your vote does matter. The truth is this. In Nevada, our best days are ahead of us. Our be the future is bright, folks. But it's only bright if we have the right leadership in place to guide us along the way. And that's what we intend to do. Our people, Nevadans, are resilient. They're determined. And they're battle-born. We're ready to build a better tomorrow for the next generation. It is the honor of my lifetime to serve as your governor. And we want to do it for four more years. Now, before we get the president out here, who's back there ready to go, I want to introduce a very, very dear friend of mine who's also in a really tough race. Her rock margins are just as thin as mine are, and she needs you to turn out and vote as well. So I'm starting to see some of those signs pop up. I need a lot more signs to pop up. Please join me in welcoming 